20 in the morning and we are on the road to another one of Rich and Jen's adventures and today is our crappie fishing trip with Matt Zenos and uh, I'm ready Rich how about you oh I'm so ready <laughs> now what is your goal for today the goal is enough uh, to learn how to catch some crappie and maybe do a catch clean and cook if you're up to the challenge of cooking tonight video that sounds good so hope we're fishing for our supper yep all right well we're gonna take you guys on a few shots on the fishing trip we'll let you know how we did well here we are putting the boat in the water and looks like it's gonna be a nice morning all right rich you ready to go yeah I'm ready I got the boat on here Sun's starting to come up, had a little rain, but now it's over. Oh, that might be a dinner one. It's pretty decent. It was on your other one. Oh, oh shoot. Outside, sorry. All right, Jen. Oh, wow. You got the first keeper of the day. Open that bed. There's another one for the frying pan. Yes. Wow, look at that, Jeff. Let me see. Scooch over. I, I'm, I'm, the hook just came right. Was he? I don't know which one he was on. Bottom one or the top one? That's the last. Uh, that's it. Ooh, he is Looks pretty. Like that's a quick. nice one. Oh, well, now we can do it. All right, so here's one of our bigger ones that we caught yesterday. I think I caught that one. Uh, I don't think so. I think it was me. <laughs> it's already gutted. Yep. Gilled. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go ahead and fillet this up for our fish sandwiches. Now, when we do this, make sure you have a really good sharp knife. You're going to make a little indent cut by the backbone. And then we're just going to come right along down here next to the backbone. Once we've got that, we're going to push down and we're going to go towards the backbone. So you can see what we've got yeah, here. Our landy meat on there. Yep. Then we're going to stick our knife in and come out by the tail. Then we're going to release right here by the ribs and the head. We're going to make a little indent, I mean a little cut right here so it's ready to go. Now we're not going to cut this off yet because it'll mess up us cutting the other side. So we're going to flip it over and then we're going to do the same thing to the other side. We're going to get ready to take off. So we're going to put our knife in then we're going to do that little score down the backbone. You always want to try to cut away from you. Right. Keep your hand out of the way of the knife. And then we're going to do the same thing to the second side. So now it's ready to come off. And what we're going to do to take it off is we're going to lift it up. And it's only held on by a little strip of rib bones right here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take that. And we're just going to cut right through those and go right over the mm. belly of the fish. That looks good. All right, now that we have the fillets off, we're going to go ahead and we're going to skin them. So you want to do is you want to go in here and start by the tail until you get a little piece of skin that you can hold on to. And then you're going to hold it near the edge of the table. And you're going to push down at an angle and take that right off of the skin. Came so right that's off. What you wow. Have. And then we're going to do the uh, same thing to the other side. All right, now we want to make sure that we don't have any bones. If there are any bones, they're going to be right in here. I can feel one right there. The pin bones. I don't know, you can barely see it. But we're going to cut those out. So we're going to make a, we're going to try to waste as little as possible. So we've got that strip of bones right there. So we're just going to cut on either side to pull those bones out. And we're going to trim that little bit of uh, tissue off right there. So we have a fillet ready to go. We're going to do the same thing to the other side. Bones are right there. So we're going to put our knife in. Cut off a little tiny strip of meat. And we're going to trim that little bit off right there. 
That looks good. All right. And that goes in our pile. So what we're going to get when we have uh, finished is we're going to have a little dish. We kept six fish, so we're going to have 12 fillets. I, well, go ahead. I, I noticed you, you're not rinsing them. I've been to some videos where they literally put them under the sink. and. Well, when you get the fish wet, the meat, it, it starts to break it down right away. So what I don't like to do is it, if there are a few scales on here, which there are a couple, I don't really care about that until I get ready to cook it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them all in here. I'm not right. going to do anything to them until it's right before time to cook them. And then I'm going to make a little, little bowl of ice water and I'm going to dip one in that, each one in that and rinse them and then lay them out to get ready to uh, bread them and fry them. Cool. But until I do that, you will retain the best quality by not putting a whole bunch of water on them. That's if you answer. were going to, if you did want to rinse them and you wanted to save them for later, then I would rinse them and I would pat them dry. Right. Then I would lay them on paper towel in here. So you want to keep them dry. Okay, we flayed the fish. Can we eat it now? Nope, we got to do a few more things before we do that. What you got to do? Well, we need some really good tartar sauce for okay. our fish sandwiches. And I happen to have a really great recipe. It's not super hard. Um, this was from one of our cooking classes, and this is actually called lemon caper tartar sauce. I do like that. It's very good. Um, even if you don't want to do it with fish, it's an excellent sandwich spread and you can make it uh, ahead of time and uh, use it the next day. I've made it on regular ham and cheese sandwiches. Um, I've used it as a dipping sauce for other things. It's very, very good. Yeah, I think we've had it with chicken before or something. Mm -hmm. It was good. It's excellent. So we're gonna put this together. Um, before we actually put the whole thing together, I wanted to go over just a couple quick things. First of all, it does ask for fresh lemon juice. I am a real proponent of real fresh lemon juice if you can get it, that's not too much trouble. Um, this looks a little weird because one of the things that we did was we zested the lemon ah. for the uh, lemon caper tartar sauce and I used this very small microplane zester. It works really, really well. So we've used that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to get some uh, lemon juice. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and it tells us that we need one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. Okay. So these are great. Um, if you like fresh squeezed lemon juice, um, you can get these anywhere. Uh, all you do is just push down, squeeze it really good, and you'll get everything out of it. And the only thing that you've got left is the seeds and the pulp. Yeah, that does seem a little more efficient than the old in the squeezing in the hand thing. Yeah, and whenever I try to squeeze in my hand, <laughs> I always get seeds in somehow. Yeah, I, I just do. So these are real nice. Um, if you like fresh squeezed orange juice, you can also uh, make that. So this is what we're gonna use for our lemon juice. One other thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna use one shallot. We're going to um, use a shallot because it's got a much milder flavor than a regular onion. I don't know if you've ever had one before, but I wanted to uh, show it to you. And you can usually get these at your grocery store. They're fantastic. So on our recipe, we are going to use two tablespoons of freshly minced shallot. So we're just gonna cut the end off of this, cut the other end off of it. I just wanted to show you all what it looked like. We're gonna peel it. And there we have our shallot. That's pretty cool. Now, if you uh, buy the shallot and you use it for something like this, and you have it left over, you can use it in any recipe for an onion. It's just gonna give you a milder flavor. Um, so what we're gonna do with this is we are just gonna mince up our two tablespoons. And when we get done with that, we're gonna come back and we're gonna put the starter sauce together. So we finished up chopping up our um, shallot really fine. And we've got that here. So we're gonna go ahead and put together this uh, lemon caper tartar sauce. So the very first thing that I did was I have one cup of mayonnaise. You can use any kind you like. If you want it lighter, you can use a you know lower fat, um, but I wouldn't use a fat free just because I don't know if the texture would be right. Uh, added to this, I've got one teaspoon of John mustard. Okay, and that's already in there as well. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add one teaspoon of our grated lemon zest. Got that in there. And then we're gonna do one tablespoon of our lemon juice. 
So one thing I'll tell you that I've done in the past, never measure your lemon juice over your container. <laughs> <laughs> one time I poured like a cup of lemon juice in accidentally. So we're going to do one tablespoon of lemon juice. Okay, and we're going to save this for some tea or something. And the next ingredient is just a dash of Tabasco. Yeah. And we're just going to put a little dash in there, not much. Okay, then we're going to put in some drained sweet pickle relish. You just don't want that to be watery and runny. Um, sometimes there's a lot of liquid. This one didn't have that much. All right. And then after that, we're going to put in our shallots. Okay. And those are in there. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in capers. I love capers. I don't know how many of you guys use capers, but capers are fantastic. They actually come from a caper bush. They're tiny, uh, salty. They give it a lot of flavor. Um, find these in your salad dressing aisle if you've never used them. They're really good in anything. Like you can put them in pasta, you can put them in sauces. And so we're putting in here is two tablespoons. So we're gonna add those in, okay? Now, ideally, you want this to be prepared at least a few hours before because you want it to set. Now I've got everything in there. Okay. Oh, wow. And we're going to put in a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay. I guess not much because the capers are yes. kind of salty. Yes. Too. And then we're going to put in a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. I also had somebody tell me where I could find one of these. And thank you to the viewer that sent that in. I was going to write your name down and I forgot, but I'm ordering one. And they, I'm super excited. They're not exactly like this, but very similar. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to whisk this all together. And you wouldn't believe the flavor this has. Like I said, it even makes like for a fantastic sandwich spread. And you can probably keep it for about a week after you make it. All right. And that is it. This is what we have for our finished product. Yum. And let's take a little taste and see what we think. So we get a little bit of capers in there and a little bit of... Uh, Shallots. Mm. Well, the magic of YouTube, we're back. We're back. We're ready to cook some fried fish sandwiches. So today we are going to use our popcorn meal that we got at the old mill when yeah. we went there for breakfast the other day. We've got our fillets, okay. some egg wash. Fillets, egg wash and our popcorn meal. And then we have our oil and that is heated up to 375. So uh, I guess we're gonna be ready. So we're gonna go ahead and put a few in. Okay, you're gonna drag it through the... Mm -hmm. A little bit of egg, egg wash. And then we're gonna put it in some of that popcorn meal. Ooh, that looks good. Shake it off. And down we go. Oh, yeah. Now, how long are you going to um, fry these for? They're only going to take probably about five minutes because they're not real thick. You doing off some color or what are you doing off? Um, just having fried this fish in the past and knowing about how long it takes. If they don't look like they're super crispy, um, we'll give them a couple extra minutes. And I'm going to probably put about four in at a time. And we have um, 12 fillets, so we'll have about three batches. And uh, shouldn't take long at all. I got some cheese grits Ooh. on the stove over there going. And our tartar sauce is ready. So we'll come back in a few minutes when we pull the fillets out and see what they look like. What do you think? I think these are about ready to come out. Are they uh, uh, GBD yet? Mm-hmm. Oh, look wow. how nice and firm. Yeah, that does firm. look good. So you're just going to put them on a little paper towel? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to let them... Uh... Ooh, that looks good. It does. I've ne I don't think I've ever had crappie, so I'm really looking forward to this. I know. Me too. I've heard so much about it. Ooh, that one looks good. All right. 
Well, I think one of the secrets when you're frying fish or anything is to not put too much in at a time. Right. People uh, put too much in and then they bring the temperature of their oil down and then it just gets greasy and uh, it's just not as good. They say if you fry your fish at the correct temperature, then when you get done, you should be able to take the oil out and only be missing a tiny bit because the oil is crisping it and not soaking into it. Right. So we're just going to get the next, the last get batch ready. Get the last ready. batch ready, yep. I think you got enough cornmeal? I guess so. Uh, I think so. I'm going to save that for the next crappie fishing trip. Yeah. If I have leftover. <laughs> Hopefully we can repeat what we uh, were taught. Yes, that was a lot of fun. I would highly recommend to anybody, uh, if you're coming here for vacation and you do like fishing. Wouldn't that be fun? Gosh, yeah. spend the day with Matt. That, I mean, telling you, the guy is, he knows his stuff. He really does. Very, very nice fellow. You're going to put his link in the description, right? Yes, I'll have that in the description. And, um, and you can go to his uh, website and check him out and, you know, see if you can schedule a trip if you're interested. Guys, it's worth it. Well, dinner is fully prepared. We've got lemon caper tartar sauce, some shredded cabbage for our fish sandwiches, our fried popcorn meal crappie, and cheese grits. And of course, a nice soft wine bun. Are you ready to eat? I'm ready. <laughs> a ladies first. All right, so a little bit of uh, tartar sauce. There you go, sir. All right. I'm going to get me a nice piece of fish. Whoa, that's big. I'm going to take one and a half. I'm going to take one for the sandwich. And I'm going to take, I'm going to put some of that coleslaw. That's a great idea. We saw someone else on YouTube do that. He just used the coleslaw pre-mix in the bag and mm -hmm. it is good. This is really good. A little extra tartar sauce so the coleslaw doesn't fly out. for it. Oh look. Ta -da. Go for it. Mmm. <laughs> oh. That is really good. Now I want to try it without, without the sandwich. I always do that. Without anything. Just the uh, the Mills what's it popcorn bready? Yeah it's really neat. Super crunchy. Mm-hmm. Mm. If you guys have never had crappie or what speckled perch, this is good. It reminds me a lot of uh, flounder. Yeah, a little mm -hmm. flaky. Mmm. That's really good. How's your sandwich? Oh, you took it from the sandwich, didn't you? I did. And now I'm gonna try the cheese grits. These are the grits that I get from the mill also. Mmm, so good. <laughs> the Hawaiian roll? Mm-hmm. The only thing I would do different is, and I wouldn't even change it, but you know what else might be good on here is a nice slice of melted cheddar. Yeah, that might, might be, be really good, good too. It really might. So. Mm. What do you think? That was our catch, clean, cook. That's right, and now, eat and eat <laughs> <laughs> well thanks for joining us we hope y'all enjoyed this video if you have any comments on about fishing or uh if you've ever had a particularly favorite fish that you like to cook let us know we're always open to ideas and suggestions and we'd always like to hear what you guys do as well and if you haven't subscribed please do and give us a like if you enjoyed this video and i guess rich i guess that's it we'll see you guys next time bye, bye.